Hollywood Jewess, Manny Gonzalez. Hey! Hey! Shana Tova! Shana Tova! Happy Simchas Torah. Yes, hello. Um, okay, Manny's also starring not only in Fiddle on the Roof on her off nights, but on her actual nights. But before she was a big Broadway star in Wicked and in the Heights and the Laura Nero off Broadway show, she, <laughs> she was on Broadway in a, a show that was talked about a lot. I wouldn't exactly call it a hit. Um, what was the name of the show, dear? It was a miss. Um, oh, <laughs> Dance of the Vampires. Julia Murney quit the show during the first read-through. Maybe for other reasons, we don't know, but Julia <laughs> Murney did a read-through and she was out. So my question is, when did it dawn on you that perhaps that. the show would not be running for years? It was my first show and I was just so excited and so green. It was like the whole community came and everybody was cheering and so excited. So I was like, this is great. Like all this hard work and all this, you know, tears and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and then my agent came, my then agent came back and was like, well, it's good that you guys have a... This is your first preview. It's good that you have time to work. Like, I was like, work on what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> no, it was great. <laughs> Little did I know it'd be three months of previews, but you know, Literally it's good. three months? Mm -hmm. They kept pushing? Three months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so tell the story of Dance of the Vampires. Um, well, Dance of the Vampires is based on um, the movie Fearless Vampire Killers, which is Roman Polanski. Just like a typical vampire story about Alfred and the professor coming to kill the vampire, and the vampire needs to drink um, an 18-year-old virgin's blood in who's order to... Who's a belter. To, who's a belter. Um, who can um, make him have everlasting life. The whole show was about this biting moment. So it happened at the end of the show. And we were on these like stairs that were kind of like bleachers. And um, w he would bite me and then we would slither down together. But it was really difficult because to be on stairs and have to slither oh, together. Bloody, bloody. So then I had this blood pack on my neck that I would have to push so that but you could see you the push blood. But how he's biting you? Because he would bite like near it. So and your hand would be up well, there. He wouldn't really bite me, you know. But, but I'm saying, but it's in his face right there. How do you have your hand there? Well, you would. I'd have to keep my hand there at the same time. So I would press it, so then you could see the blood kind of come down. And then one time I pressed it really, like, just too hard, and it just squirted right into his mouth. He started choking. It was. So and Manny bad. told me that she was devastated that she had ruined the show. Not perhaps realizing that <laughs> that train had left the station. Um, okay, so we're going to sing. Now, if you don't know, um, the this, this show was written by Jim Steinman, whose big hit song was, uh, well, one of the big hit songs was Total Eclipse of the Heart. Mm -hmm. So naturally, he put it in the show because, you know, it helped advance the plot. So, um, <laughs> just shrug up. Um, okay, so this, this song took place when? This song took place in the beginning of the second act. By the way, the audience was waiting for the vampire bite and for the song to happen. Yes. Everyone so was this waiting. was like, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm always in the dark. I'm living in a pile of keg awaiting a spark. I really need you tonight. Forever's gonna start tonight. Forever's gonna start. Once upon a time I dreamed of falling in love. Now I'm only falling apart. There's nothing I can do for a total eclipse of the heart. Tonight, later, at the ball, take it. There's nothing I can do, a total eclipse of the heart. Closing notice. And if you, now, now let us discuss the show that she's starring in eight times a week. Now, by the way, there's certain shows on Broadway where people only do six performances a week because it's so vocally taxing. Yet, Elphaba, the highest belt on Broadway, eight times a week. Yep. Have you missed because of any vocal problems? Nope. Man, did you know what your own nickname was in, in the Heights, by the way, or was it only behind your back? No, it's to my face. What was your nickname, dear? The Beast. The Beast. <laughs> because of the vocal chops. The Beast. And apparently, I heard that you missed a vocal rehearsal, and Andrea said to Karen Olivo, she said, where is Manny? We're having this vocal harmony rehearsal. And Karen said, the beasts don't need a vocal rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm obsessed with. <laughs> it's true, it's true. 
you! There's only one moment in Wicked which I refuse to clap. It's when Alphaba ends her song on a money low note. Let me show my amazing low range. You know what, I'm not interested. I was raging, I was like, it's not called the last note when it's below middle C, raging. I would like to do the song as it should end and perhaps Stephen Remus and Stephen Schwartz will hear this version and please add it to the show. Shows have been, Wicked's changed, right? They've added national tour versions now. Can we please hear the song as it should end? Thank you. Don't wish, don't start. Wishing only wounds the heart. I was born for the rose and pearl. There's a girl I know. She loves her so. I'm not that good. Thank you! Contact me on my website, Stephen Schwartz, <laughs>